Hey guys. Hello. So, uh, what are we looking at here? We're we are uh, doing Oxen. something fun, and uh, uh, you guys have uh, seen our podcast clock. Yes. Uh, this is uh, the the rack mount unit that we use to be able to know how long it's been while we're recording zombie tech and first spin and uh, to be announced things that are super secret. Ha 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 ha. Um, yeah. And, uh, well, uh, one thing with, uh, those shows is that, uh, one of the participants is always, um, through Skype on the other side of the world. So they can't see the clock. Right. Uh, so what we're doing here is we've got a propeller and we're using its TV out to generate a video signal, uh, that shows the time from the podcast clock. And we're using our Black Magic Intensity Extreme. Uh, capture device to actually send that as our video out over Skype to them. Was that very difficult? Um, it's a few hours of hacking uh, to get together. Uh, I would like to make a much better version. Uh, so sure. that, that final version will be a significant uh, uh, work investment there to make happen. But I think it's kind of cool. Cool. I, I I think it's awesome that we're getting video out of a propeller. Yeah, yeah, that's I fun. Like that. It's just TV out. Uh, I was playing with the the VGA stuff too, and it was really fun. Cool. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, you've got uh, some uh, XB stuff to show us. Always. All right, let's go check that out. Okay. Okay. Welcome back to our XB. Uh, Looking to XB here. Um. So instead of going through all the code and analyzing all the code here on the YouTube, I'm going to direct you to our Tumblr, which will have um, essentially all of the efforts that I have made into actually analyzing it for you. There's a link to that in the description along with all sorts of other useful stuff. Correcto. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you um, what it should look like. And um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Okay. So um, this is going to be the exact same setup as what we had last week. Uh, here we have our prop BOE with the XB on it, data lines going from D0 and D1 to their respective pins. Um, and here we have the switch set up, but for today's uh, examples, you actually won't need the switch set up, so don't even worry about it. And then here on this prop BOE, this is the remote node. So this is the base node remote node. Um, we have our XB, our buzzer, and our LED. And so both of these are currently connected through US, what is it? USA to mini B or something like that, cables to the computer where I can program and um, where I can get these all gussied up. So, I'm going to go ahead and start with this first example, uh, manual polling base. This code will end up going onto the base node, and the polling remote code will end up going onto the remote code, um, remote node. <laughs> and all of this information, all of this code can be downloaded from Parallax's website on their XB wireless kit link. Um, and I think I'll try and include that too. So, I've gone ahead and I've uh, put the code onto their respective locations. And I'm going to go ahead and open up an instance of x-ctu from Digi. Let's go to the terminal. And what we'll see is that we start out with a configuring XB. It waits a couple of seconds, and then it says enter the address of the node. I'm going to go ahead and put fffff for all. And I'm going to control the LED. Uh, let's do max brightness. And what you see is that we have a good acknowledgement, and we also have our LED at max brightness. So this particular code allows for manual control of the LED as well as the buzzer. So let's go ahead and mess with the buzzer now, B for buzzer. And let's do 150 for the buzzer frequency. And you can hear it. It says good acknowledgement, which meant that we got a good response. Um, and I'll go ahead and turn that off. Off. Um, 
And so if you wanted to actually manually control the state of whatever your peripheral was in, um, you can do that very easily. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do automatic polling, which um, does a slightly different thing. It actually kind of uh, does a round robin towards all the potential nodes that it could get. And then when it comes to a node that actually gives it back an acknowledgement, it will change its state. So I'm going to go ahead and load the automatic polling base code onto the base node. Let's reset this here. Load EEPROM. Lovely. And then for the remote node, we're going to use the same polling remote code. And I'm just going to load it onto the EEPROM for fun. Funsies. OK. And then I'm going to open another instance of x-ctu. We'll go to the terminal. And we see that it's configuring xb. And this is all automatic. I'm not touching anything. So the controlling node, it looks at node 1. We don't see anything. So nothing happens. We go to node 2. And this happens to be node 2. So we set the LED to 200, we set the frequency to 1000, and then again, it'll cycle through 1, 2, 3, it'll go to all nodes, and so this will also get changed uh, where the LED is set to 400, then the frequency to 2000. So I apologize for the dogs who might be reacting currently. <laughs> and again, this pretty much just cycles through changing both the buzzer as well as the LED. And this is just an automatic poll. So what you could do is you could set up your mesh network, you could have a whole bunch of different nodes, and you could just automatically get information from them and then or, or automatically send information to them and say, OK, do I see a node 1? Yes. Let me change that. Do I see a node 2? Yes. Change that, etc. All right, and I'll go ahead and turn that off. <laughs> Save the uh, dog owners here a little bit. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and do this last pair of um, code, which is scheduled base and scheduled remote. Do a little reset here. All right, so I turn on my base node, and I run... I uh, load the EEPROM with a scheduled base code. Okay. I'm going to load my other one, my remote node here with a scheduled remote code. The cool thing is that about this is that it's all automatic. And then I'm going to go ahead and open x-ctu. And then we'll do check out the terminal. Configuring XB. Lovely. And let's see what it does. It waits for data. OK. And what it sees is it gets an update from the address 2. It notes what state the uh, two, node 2 was in and then changes and updates that remote node. Then it waits again for anything around it that might be pinging it, gets its level, and then changes it. Then again, gets its level, changes it. Gets its level, changes it. Gets its level, changes it. And each time, you know, so if you had different nodes around here, then it would also get information from there and then change it. And let's do one cycle of this. Whoa. <laughs> can you hear that, Whisker, or are you too old? Oh, yeah, I can hear that. <laughs> and then so it sets the LED back to zero once you've gotten to the maximum. And there we go again. 
So I thought this was a really cool way um, just to show that you can actually use, you know, and I wasn't touching anything. I wasn't entering any information. I wasn't having to press any buttons. It was just automatically doing what the code told it to do. Um, and that makes these XPs really convenient. So if you want uh, automatic polling or automatic changes given certain states, uh, et cetera. So, and next week, I believe I'm going to show uh, control of an RC servo uh, with, with uh, at least this switch setup. And then I'll get an RC servo on this board here, and we can do some wireless control. That should be uh, fun. It should. All right. Is that it? Yes, it is. Awesome. Let's get on with this. On with the show. And uh, here is what I've been up to for Orange the last... stripes. Orange stripes. So what we're looking at here <laughs> is the uh, backside I love of orange. the LCD uh, uh, case that's going inside of the rack uh, that we're taking with us on our trip mm -hmm. to uh, Rockland, California for the Propeller Expo. Pull me over. <laughs> well, I guess it's the Parallax Expo. They're going to be doing a lot more than just propellers. Right. Mm. There's going to be like robotics and yeah. such. Right. Anyway, we'll be there. So if you're going, make sure you say hello. Yes, please. Uh, uh, we'll be in our trailer. And uh, <laughs> Well, no, not I'm bringing a trailer. My Corolla. But but if we if we did have a trailer, we'd definitely be in Star -studded it. Star studded Corolla. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Hmm. So what were the layers for this? Okay, so to do this I had to uh cut that big hole in it and there's still some cutting to be done on the inside, but um yeah, I had to cut a big hole in one side of it and then I sanded it and primered it and then put on a black gloss color coat or two mm -hmm. as necessary and then masked out the racing stripes which make the lcd refresh faster and uh <laughs> then did a couple of coats of uh orange color took the masking off and then did a couple of coats of clear coat over that and then applied the decal uh, the decal is from Grand Idea Studio, uh, Joe Grand's company, and uh, he's the one who provided the LCD module for Indeed. us, so we thought we would brand it Joe School. Sounds good. Now, between each coat, did, was there anything special that you needed to do? Uh, you could wet sand it if you wanted to. Um, but you didn't need to do anything? Uh, not really. I, I was very, very... I've done this before, so... Oh. Uh, if you, if you can get your paint on uh, we well enough, paint. you don't really need to to do too much with it. Uh, you yeah. know, you do it right, and it's a lot easier. Yeah, we use spray paint, by the way, not like paint with a paintbrush. So it was a lot of uh, fume inhalation. Yeah, you always do that in a ventilated area. Yes, please. Anyway, so that's what I've been up to, and that took days and days and days and days of work. Well, it looks amazing. I love it, and I would drive it. All right. Well, <laughs> thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we'll be back next Wednesday with another video. Sounds good. Bye. Bye. We post videos all the time, so don't forget to subscribe. And follow us on Twitter at TYMKRS.